Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Parkinson's disease and anti-Parkinson drugs. So I apologise about that interruption. Right, so we were discussing the structure of dopamine then. So dopamine has a single amino group here, followed by an ethylene group. And then the other key structure that you have within uh, dopamine is what's known as a catechol ring. Now a catechol ring consists of a benzene ring, like so. Uh, with two alcohol groups coming off the benzene ring, one there and one there. Okay, so let me highlight this up. So, this structure here, the benzene ring with the two alcohol groups coming off it, that is the catechol ring. Okay, and it is for this reason that dopamine is often uh, described as a uh, catecholamine okay because it has a catechol ring within it and it also has an amino group okay right so that's the structure of dopamine now it's a pretty rare neurotransmitter to be used within the brain there are very few neurons in the brain which use do dopamine as their neurotransmitter okay and uh, the neurons which do use dopamine as their neurotransmitter are generally all clustered together in certain nuclei within the brain. And two of these major nuclei are the uh, two substantia nigra pars compactors that we've seen, the left substantia nigra pars compactor and the right substantia nigra pars compactor. Okay, now the neurons in these areas are going to send their axons into uh, the chordate putamen, okay, into the dorsal striatum, and that's where they're going to be releasing dopamine, and that dopamine is going to have a very key function, as we're going to see, in the uh, controlling of voluntary movement. Okay, right, uh, so what I now want to show you is this pathway from the substantia nigra pars compactor to the dorsal striatum, which is known as the nigrostriatal pathway. Okay, right. So, uh, how am I going to show this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to once again look down from above. Okay, so we're going to go back to drawing a picture that is exactly like this. So we're going to look from above and we're going to see the pathway which these uh, dopaminergic axons are going to follow to get from uh, the substantia nigra pars compactor over here to the dorsal striatum. Okay, right. So, firstly, let's show the midbrain then. Okay, so I'll leave a lot of space because we're going to need structures in front here. Okay, so here are the two cerebral peduncles of the midbrain then. There's the left cerebral peduncle, here's the right cerebral peduncle. Okay, and then at the back, we're going to have the superior colliculi, the left superior colliculus, and the right superior colliculus here. Okay, right, and uh, let's draw on the substantia nigra pars compactor then. So here is the left substantia nigra pars compactor, and then here is the right substantia nigra pars compactor. Okay, let's also put the thalamus on top. Okay, so we'll have the left thalamus here, okay, and then we'll have the right thalamus on this side here. Okay, like so. And uh, we'll colour in the uh, thalami in turquoise once again. So here is the left thalamus in turquoise here, and here is the right thalamus also in turquoise here. Now, in order to show this nigrostriatal pathway then, we are going to need uh, the structure that sits in front of the thalami, okay, which remember is the hypothalamus, because these dopaminergic neurons from the substantia nigra pars compactor, they are going to send their axons into a structure known as the medial forebrain bundle, which is going to run through the hypothalamus. Okay, so, um, let me get back my original picture of the brainstem here. So here is the brainstem where we have the thalami here and then the hypothalamus in front. Now, from this picture, 
it looks as though the hypothalamus is just one great big blob here. In reality, it is not just one blob of grey matter. Instead, it is actually hollow. Okay, It's actually got the third ventricle sitting inside of it, which is going to be full of cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so I want to now show this by looking at this structure from above. So we are now looking at this picture here, and I'm now not just going to show the thalami on this picture, I'm also going to show the hypothalamus, which is sitting in front of the two thalami. Okay, right. So, if we continue the picture on forward then, we're now going to have the hypothalamus sitting in front of the thalami here. Okay, now the hypothalamus, as I said, is not just one big lump. It is, in fact, hollow. Okay, so it's, in fact, just making up the walls. Okay, so previously, when we looked from the left-hand side, all we were seeing was the thalamus here, the left thalamus, and then we were seeing the hypothalamus from the side here. And we thought that this was just one solid lump, but, in fact, it has got this hollow portion in the middle. Okay, so in fact it's making up the lateral wall of this third ventricle here. So the third ventricle, which remember is this gap uh, full of cerebrospinal fluid between the two thalami, continues on forward into the hypothalamus. Okay, and this is all full of uh, cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so this is the third ventricle as well here. Now, not only does the hypothalamus make up the lateral walls of the third ventricle, but it also makes up the floor of the third ventricle. So if you were a little man standing in the third ventricle, what you'd be standing on is the floor of the hypothalamus. Okay, so uh, the mammillary bodies would be down here somewhere, okay, projecting downwards onto the basal surface, surface of the brain. Okay, right. Um, so, this is all the hypothalamus then. We'll colour it in in green here. So, back to the nigrostriatal pathway then. So, the dopaminergic neurons, which have their cell bodies in the uh, substantia nigra pars compactor, which we'll colour in blue here, are going to send their axons into a bundle which runs through the hypothalamus. Now, you would only ever say that you have one hypothalamus. You would never talk about the hypothalami. However, people do talk about the left side of the hypothalamus here and the right side of the hypothalamus. And that makes sense because they are effectively symmetrical. Okay, so this one has the same sort of things in as this one here. Okay, now running through the middle of both sides of the hypothalamus, both the left hypothalamus here and the right hypothalamus here, you have a bundle of axons, okay, and some of the axons in this bundle are going to be from the dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compactor. Okay, so I'll just label this up. This is the substantia nigra pars compactor. Okay, now this great bundle of axons that runs through both sides of the hypothalamus, you have a left one and a right one of these bundles, is known as the medial forebrain bundle. Okay, so you have a left medial forebrain bundle on this side here, and a right medial forebrain bundle on this side here. Okay, and for short, the medial forebrain bundle is abbreviated to the MFB. So we have the left MFB and the right MFB. Okay, right. So, the uh, dopaminergic neurons of the substantia nigra pars compactor then are going to be sending their axons into the medial forebrain bundles, and from the medial forebrain bundles, these dopaminergic neurons are going to leave, and then they're going to go to innervate the um, dorsal striatum. So, let's try and show the structures of the dorsal striatum here. Okay, so here then, this is the lenticular nucleus, so we have the putamen here, and then we have the globus pallidus here. Okay, and then we're also going to have the chordate nucleus. So I'll try and show this here. Okay, but it is difficult. You have to have it wrapping round like so. So imagine that picture that we showed previously where we were looking from the side. I'm drawing the same thing as that, just from above. Okay, so it's looping round above the, um, above the lenticular nucleus here, and then it's looping back round underneath it. Okay, so let's colour in these portions. So here, in vivid purple, here is our chordate nucleus. Okay, like so. Uh, and then we also have the putamen here 
in orange. Okay, right, so these dopaminergic fibres are going to come out of the medial forebrain bundle and then they're going to go to both the chordate nucleus and the um, putamen. Okay, the dorsal striatum here. So you're going to have a huge number of these dopaminergic fibres. I know I've suggested there that there's only two of them, but in fact there's a huge number of them coming in and innovating the dorsal striatum in this way. And that's true on the other side as well. You've got a left dorsal striatum shown here, but you also have a right dorsal striatum here. And these dopaminergic neurons from the right medial forebrain bundle, which have come from the right substantia nigra pars compactor, will be coming out of the medial forebrain bundle and innovating the neurons in the right dorsal striatum.